Um, I don't know if um, some of you saw me when I spoke at Stoke. Um, I spoke about things that, you know, sort of we've got this corporate governance and a lot of things didn't seem to add up. And I couldn't understand why everything seemed to be becoming a company or a corporation. Well, now I can explain it because the nice thing about what I do and the people that surround me is that everyone who comes to me gives me a snippet a bit a little snippet of information it doesn't matter who you are or what you're talking about and that's why I'm going to ask you today to listen to what people say it doesn't matter what they're talking about whether you agree with it listen because this is about communication that's what a community is about it's about communicating with each other and that's the only reason I'm stood here today I haven't got a clue why I'm stood here and I don't know why you've come but it's just the way things work out so just accept that fact and crack on. Right. You probably, a lot of you know that we, we've got a, a little website called TPUC. Um, I am a carpenter by trade. And I still am a carpenter. I was down recently for a doctor friend laying a bamboo floor. So I still, still do, the, do the job. I have to live. I started this website and I didn't really know why I started it. But an amazing amount of information came to me that I didn't really understand. And some of it I still don't understand. And I started to look at it and there was a jigsaw puzzle unfolding in front of me and pieces were slotting in and this is the presentation you're going to see. So I want to ask you some very simple questions. And before I start I want to say that Albert and John are, are, are good friends and I do not disrespect them in any way. I just come from a slightly different perspective. That's all. Okay, so what they've said is very valuable. And I, I'm not going to diss their information, but I just want to give you a, a, another way to look at life as we know it. And the top one says very simply, do you believe that Parliament is elected to represent you and your wishes? Right, okay. I love this. I love <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um, do you really know what politics are about? Do we really understand this word politics? Okay. Some do, some don't. Do you know what Acts of Parliament and statutory instruments actually are? Yeah? So we understand what these things are and we have to live by these things. Right. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody has seen a presentation that I've done before, and I've done a few around the country, if you, you, I know you're going to have a lot of these answers, but obviously there's a lot of people who don't, so for the benefit of them, if we could kind of allow it to just evolve as it will do. Do you know what a, a constitution really is? And the clue is in the first three letters, con. <laughs> That's a clue. Um, like I said, I, I'm not really killing anybody else's stuff, I'm just giving you my perspective of things. I suppose that's what it really is. Do you know what the United Kingdom really is? Do you know what it is? A lot of people say, you know, a lot of people have got this image of what the United Kingdom really is and it's far from United. That's one thing I will say, far from United. You live in a society, can you name it? Oh yeah, you've seen it before. <laughs> I normally say something very different, but there's a lot of people here and I'm going to curb my language today. Well, I'll try my best. If you don't like swearing and you are adverse to the odd swear word, then I'll tell you when to cover your ears. Now. No one did it. <laughs> right. Are the police doing their job properly? 
And it's a shame because we met, I met two CID officers yesterday who were very, very pleasant indeed. Maybe they were pleasant because they realised I knew the game. Um, but it was an interesting conversation. Um, do you believe we have courts of justice? No. no. And this is the last one that a lot of people stumble on. Do you believe you're a person? That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. That's the key to this. That's why it's underlined. This is the key. The word person, persona, the character, the mask. This is the key to everything. Um, and a lot of people do believe they are a person. And it's said, you know, I ring people up and the answer phone says, the person you're trying to contact is not here at the moment. I'm not trying to contact a person, I'm trying to contact a human being, or a man or a woman. But, you know, there you go. Members of Parliament, a good friend of mine, that some of you might know as the anti-terrorist, um, and the, don't, yeah, thank you, he deserves everything, yeah. Um, he told us a little while ago that the members of Parliament were actually a compa company. Now, I broke the words up because Parliament actually means two words, which is talk and lies. It's talk in French and Latin for lies. So it's talk lies, acts of talking lies. Um, but Cordy, he said they're a company. So I don't really believe anything that people tell me, so I look for this information. And what I want to tell you today is not to believe a word I'm saying. And if you really do, if you, you, know, if you class me in the so-called society we live in, I'm a tattooed carpenter <laughs> with a Cockney accent. <laughs> you know, would you believe me? <laughs> right. So look for this stuff yourself. Everything you're going to see today is factual. Absolutely factual. You can go and find this bar one little bit that I'll explain later. Um, so they're the directors of a company and they've got this company number, it's called, it's that UC number there, that's their actual number, their company number. And because they are a company, and they, they, it literally is orchestrated, they will keep going in the same direction, it will never ever change, it's never changed and it never will change, because it is orchestrated. A lot of people don't know that Tony Blair, Margaret Thatcher and John Major have something very, very significant in common, bar being Prime Ministers and that is their cousins. And no one seems to know this. If you want to, get, if you want to see this, go and get a copy of Kids Trivial Pursuit, because it's one of the questions. There's little snippets everywhere. Everywhere. you just got to look. The members of Parliament are not only the, not on, the, sorry, are not the only government a department that are a company, a corporation, and the big question is why, and that's what I'm going to lead you into. I don't know if anybody's seen this, but this is the new company's house. There's a company called Dewport, and they're based down in Bristol. A good friend of mine, Chris Lees, knows this company very well, and they are the new version of company's house. As you can see, there's a lot of the UC numbers, but the members of Parliament quite clearly are on there, House of Commons, as a company. That's what you go on company's house to search for, companies. We use another website, which we've had a lot of dissing about, a lot of people have attacked me about it because we use Dun & Bradstreet. I want to tell you a little bit about Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet is the leading business world's credit reference agency. It has about 160 million corporations on it worldwide and you can check out, if you want to do business with these people, you can check them out. You find out if they're credit worthy, if they've got county courts, whatever. Pay the bills in time. And the members of the parliament, again, are found on Dun & Bradstreet. I used to show Gordon Brown and David Cameron as being companies, but I've, I've, this is the most interesting one. This is Alistair Darling, MP, who happens to be a diplomat. Now, Alistair Darling, MP, is a trading name of the Labour Party. So the Labour Party trades in his name a, in di with diplomatic status. If you understand diplomatic status, that means that certain laws and legal positions can be circumvented. They can actually get round things. One of the things that they did get round, one of the things that they hid, was this information here. We recently did a bit of work and um, looking into um, a company called Consignia Customer Management Limited. And out of the blue, someone contacted us who could supply us company credit reports for a charge as well, which is even better. So he said to me, tell me the company and I'll get you the report. Okay, fine. So we put him to the test. 
and lo and behold, we, just, we, we did it with Consignia. Now, Consignia is a PLC, it's a private limited with share capital company, and its company status is it's non-trading, and it hasn't been trading since the 4th of the 11th of 02, which is very, very interesting with some information I'm going to give you in a little, in a little while. It's a part of a group of 35 companies under its ultimate parent company, the Secretary of State to Trade and Industry. Now, there's a few implications with this, including two foreign companies, as you can see up there, including as well 10 Royal Mail companies, the holdings, the pensions, everything. It's all held under this company, under this ultimate parent company, Secretary of State of Trade and Industry, who was the Secretary of State of Trade and Industry. Mr. Darling. Now, I find that quite interesting that a government position that is meant to be paid for off of taxpayers' money, off of your hard earned money that's taken away from you, is the ultimate parent company of a group of companies, but it's meant to be a government department. So, what's going on? But it gets deeper than this, it gets even deeper. Because we started to look at the post office and someone sent us this information just recently and it actually turns out is if you're on the dole and you get a gyro, you generally have what's called a post office account. A lot of people remember these post office accounts to get the little books. Well, the post office accounts now are owned by JP Morgan Europe Limited. Now, we've had this confirmed by HM Customs and Revenue. They've actually confirmed that that's absolute fact. So you have a foreign bank now that owns part of the post office. Very interesting. But what's even more interesting is that a non-trading company, since the date I gave you, is trading as TV licensing. TV licensing takes three billion a year off of you to a company that doesn't exist, that's part of the Secretary of State and Trade of Industry. Things are not right. Things are not right. I could put a lovely swear word to that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I could, though. So there's something very, very wrong, okay? And this is all hidden. You wouldn't know about this unless someone like me comes along and says, oh, did you know this? So I started to look at politics, because I didn't understand politics, and certainly didn't understand what Parliament... Like, you would understand the formulation of Parliament, the history of Parliament. I understand that. But I looked at it, and I'm not going to read it out because it doesn't need to be read out because it says exactly what's clear. But the interesting part about it is what policy is because it's actually a written contract. And it's the contracts that are the most significant here. They're the most important part of this. Because what you live in is contract law. You live in the law of money. It's, they call it the colour of law, the colour of money, but it is basically contract law. That's what you're living in. But it's done via deception because you just don't know. So when you look at an Act of Parliament, which becomes a statute, which is primary legislation, which in turn is enacted and enforced by statutory instruments, which is secondary legislation. Council tax is a prime example. There's thousands of examples, but council tax is one that sort of hits home with people. Because people I know, you know when I was, I was speaking to a, uh, a lady in a, uh, um, a garage, and she, once she'd paid the council tax and all the bills, she actually had £20 to feed her child and herself every week. Now, there's something very wrong there, very wrong indeed. And the government said to her, well, if you quit your job, we'll look after you and pay the tax. But because she wants to go and do a job, she is penalised and survives on £20 a week. Most of you spend more on that when you go out for a meal. It just brings it home. It brings it home. So, council tax is a statutory instrument. You can check this out for yourself. Go on the OPSI site. Enacted on the 1st of April 1993 under its primary legislation, the Local Government Finance Act 1992. Now, there's a little trick goes on with this. It's, it's, it's quite clever. Because if they put an act through, which they did the Terrorism Act, is a classic example. Terrorism, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit lo later because something very significant about it. But when they put an act through, they don't have to enact every part of the act. And have you ever read these things? Oh, dear. They're mind-boggling, absolutely. But they don't have to enact it. What they do is they sneak in a statutory instrument every now and again and enact part of an act. The reason they do this is because once they put the act through, they don't have to pull it back through Parliament. 
It can just be enacted under a statutory instrument. So what you live under mostly is statutory instruments, but you just don't know what they are. Because in, in all the definitions I could find, and I've searched everywhere to find this, because I want to prove myself wrong, because that's the easy, but it is a created, written, legal contract. It's contract. That's the point. I'd like you to remember that, because it's going to come back a little bit later on. So I looked at this so-called society that we live in. And I looked at the meaning of society, number of persons united together by mutual consent, which is very important, in order to deliberate, determine and act jointly for some common purpose. <laughs> My friend, Mr. Gerrish, wherever he is, will be enlightening you on this later. <laughs> but society basically really, all it really means is the socially dominant members of a community. Someone, the people who actually say, I'm better than you because of my position, because of my status, because of the clothes I wear, because of the way I walk. <laughs> Unbelievable. They really do believe it. I remember watching, me and my partner Heb were watching, um, uh, what were we watching? Some parliament thing, which was quite hilarious, because it's just like going to the theatre. Um, and we were watching it, and uh, Hazel Blears was in the panel afterwards, and she said, um, I've got a lot of respect for the ordinary people. And I, and I piped up, I'm about to swear, I piped up, who the fuck does she think she is? <laughs> but it all around, <laughs> it all evolves around this word, status. And there is no mistake that statute comes from the word status. I promise you, but I'll go into that a little bit later. The common purpose of our socially dominant members of our community is to maintain their social dominance off your backbone. And that is what's happening the world over. Okay? Doesn't matter, people tell me about New World Order and all this, and there's, you know, yeah, okay, you believe in what you want to believe in. You, there's nothing, I can't tell you not to believe in nothing, and it's not for me to do. All I'm seeing is the socially dominant members of the world want to maintain their social dominance, and the only way to do that is to keep you enslaved. And slavery is a harsh word, but it is the truth. And it's not about colour. That's just, it's not about, it's not how we look, how we speak, or what we look like. Everybody in the world who is not the socially dominant is enslaved. But they are as well, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So we've got the socially dominant members. This is simply the Law Society. This is the society you belong to, but as a man or a woman, you're not a member. And I'll explain. So I looked at contracts. An agreement between two or more persons. There's that magic word, persons. That creates or modifies an existing relationship. There must be mutual consent by all parties. Otherwise, the contract cannot exist. It cannot exist unless there's mutual consent. And this is very important. It's another thing I want, I'm going to come back to. So I looked at a constitution, which John explained earlier, the way he, his take on it. And, you know, pretty much that's it, basically unwritten. John talked about the American constitution, our constitution, ours is unwritten. The reason I see ours is unwritten, because something that's not written down is easier to manipulate. Very simple. Very, very simple indeed. But see, the point is, a man or a woman is legally known as a thing. Did you know that? You're a thing. No, you are. You're a thing. That's what you're known as. Things. For nothing of substance, natural, and I presume you're all natural, can exist in the legal industry. The thing has to be given a legal personality. A legal person. A certified name. A man or a woman is not a member of this society. The certified name, the legal personality, the legal person is. This is all that is bound by the rules of this constitution, of the Law Society, which is actually Anderson's Constitution. Now, if you're into the Ministry of Funny Handshake stuff, have a look at Anderson's Constitution. It makes fascinating reading. 
So what I've decided to do, and there's a lot of help from Richard who sat in, uh, sat in the audience, one of the admin, head my partner, Dan, a lot of people have given us help about this, and the anti-terrorist again. This is actually what an Act of Parliament is defined as, a statute is defined as. And it's quite simple, it's a legislative rule of society given the force of law by the consent of the governed, as of a rule of a corporation. Now, as it says there, by its own definition, it tells you it's not law. It can be given the force of law if you agree. But it doesn't mean it's law, because it says it's not. This comes from the neuter of Latin, status, the legal character or condition of a personal thing that is actually a maxim. Do we know what a maxim is? Right, well a maxim in law is an internationally recognised fact in law that cannot be disputed, rebutted or even talked about. It is a fact. The maxims are very powerful. There's a lot of them that are good and there's a lot that are bad. So if you are going to use maxims, just use the good ones. <laughs> now, I've been attacked over this so much. The United Kingdom Corporation Limited. Formerly known as United Kingdom PLC, United Kingdom Corporation, and now... We believe it to be known, and I will say believe because I, don't, I can't show you the evidence yet, but we believe it's the UK PLC company. And it's on Dun & Bradstreet. So as far as I'm concerned, it exists. But I've been attacked. Oh, you can't take that. It's just a website, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if it doesn't exist, why is it in the public records office being talked about on at least three occasions? Why is it there? If it's something that's complete fabrication, that is not, you know, it's got no tangibility at all, why is it being talked about? And this is in the public records office. Go and look for yourself. You can make an appointment, go down there and look. United Kingdom Corporation has employees, and that's not just civil servants, that's anybody. Anyone who has a national insurance number is an employee. And I want to ask you a very simple question. If you have national insurance, why do you need any other insurance? But surely it covers every eventuality and everything. You've got national insurance and you've even got a policy number. <laughs> Company policy of this corporation required me as an employee, which I was, um, to pay tax and follow all the legislative rules of that corporation, in this case, statutes, Acts of Parliament. As in any company, if I break the rules, I'll be disciplined under that company's legislation, which I have been many, many times. Now, the disciplinary procedures of the United Kingdom Corporation are quite simple. See, because the police of the United Kingdom Corporation are all companies. Oh, shock. No one believes me. Not companies. Oh, they can't be companies. They're the police. How could they possibly be companies? But they are, because they have to be. As corporate policy enforcement officers, their job is to enforce the rules of the corporation. They're kind of divided in two, because they have a common law duty, which is the oath of office, which Albert's talked about, and other bits and pieces. And then there's another side to them, which is a corporate side, which is very interesting. All the courts in the United Kingdom, including the highest court in the land, are companies, every single one of them, and they have to be. If I break the rules, I will get an invite to their place of business to discuss my punishment. And as I've said, I've been many, many times. Many times. Except they are not inviting me, I just thought they were. As you do. And that even seems the highest court in the land, which is... Thank you. House of Lords. Why is the House of Lords a court? Yeah, come on, John. <laughs> the House of Lords is a court because originally, no, and it actually still stands to this day until the 1911 Parliament Act smashed it to bits, but actually the original system was that any legislation coming into this country had to go past the judiciary. Correct, John? So the House of Lords was the judiciary part of the judiciary. It's actually the highest court in the land. But it's a company. Exactly the same. 
All company. I want to talk about my friend here. And I modelled this on a very dear friend of mine, Mick Reid. And I've got a, quite a few friends in the police force who I kind of um, got to know when I was young. <laughs> now, I modelled this on Mick because this is how I remember the police. And I know a lot of people in here will remember these people. They're few and far between now, but they do still exist. You just have to try and get through the other part to get to this. But they do exist. So we've got this policeman. And when I was growing up, I was, a, I was a pain in the ass to these old boys. And one particular, I grew up in a village and we had a copper on a push pipe, which is not very clever. You know, especially when you're driving motocrosses across the field. You know, he can't really keep up. He did try, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> he did try. <laughs> But his name was Bob, Bob Sell, a lovely, a lovely man. Um, but Mick could have nicked me a hundred times. But he knew that nicking me, because I was very mixed up when I was a kid, he knew nicking me would not solve the problem. He knew what I needed was help. I needed to talk to, talk to someone. So he used compassion, he used friendship, and he used discretion. And John talked about this a minute ago. This is what a jury holds. It's called discretion. This is why nullification of a case can be performed by you. Because you can go against a law or a corporate act policy if you believe that policy to be unfair in them circumstances. This is called discretion. And this is what these men and women have. Discretion. It's a very, very big part. Duty under the common law of this country to serve and protect and uphold the law. There's a massive difference between upholding the law and enforcing something. I'm not going to say law because it's not. But there's a massive difference. But people just don't seem to realise there is one. And these were there to serve and protect us. Now I've heard people say that women have been on the streets and they actually in, in fear because of a police presence. Now surely if their job's to protect us you'd be all right with the police being about. You'd be quite happy. Oh, the police are there. Fine, I'll just crack on. They're there to protect me. Now, oh no, they might nick me for something. Because we all, we're all in fear. And now, we, 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 got, we got better coming. We got better. So we're frightened of these people now. But they're there to serve and protect us. They're there to help us. So, what comes along? The Gestapo. And these are the Gestapo. Yeah, man, they're getting more like cyborg. They have actually cameras on their head. Have you seen the cameras? The cameras, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're actually taking films of you while you're talking to them and stuff like that. But these are the Gestapo. They are dressed to intimidate. Some of these people, I believe, if you actually sat them on a chair and asked them to get up, they couldn't get up because of the amount of clobber they've got. <laughs> but these are corporate employees. They're revenue collectors. They're there to enforce the Acts of Parliament upon you. They're there to enforce contracts. That's all they're there to do. And they do. Every time you get nicked, and I know, you know, when, I, I, you know when I've been nicked, they always tell you what you've broken. This legislation of this Act, blah, 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 blah. They seem to reel it off. It's quite clever how they do it. But it's always an Act. But the clue's in the word. Act. It's an Act. That's why they call it acting. But it gets better. Because now, we've got these. Oh. <laughs> there's a great story about this one. I'm not going to tell you. But there's a great story. So what we've got is, is we have, we've gone from all of this to these. And this is, as you know, a police community support officer. Who actually has no powers whatsoever? Nothing at all. But we know that they were given a warrant card and a copy of paste and told to put it somewhere because you're not going to quite need it yet, but you will in the future. Now, that's a very interesting thing to say to someone. They definitely are a corporate employee because they hold no oath of office. Absolutely no oath of office whatsoever. So... The way this country is structured is, unless you hold an oath to the Queen, to the Sovereign, then you have no authority. And how it simply works is this. The Queen has, is the highest authority in the land, 
because she's a representative of our sovereignty, because we're actually the sovereigns. We invest our, we didn't do it, but we invest that into the Queen, and then everyone who's taken authority has to have an oath to the Queen, i.e. the judiciary, the police, MPs, the Lords, all of them. They have to have an oath. And this is why these people are on the streets without an oath. Because this is to get you used to people who can't have any authority, have an authority, under a corporate banner for a very, very specific reason, which I'll lead into. Now, I want to explain something, because people actually believe, say to me, you're against the police. I am not against the police in any shape, form or fashion. I just want them to do their job properly. Oh, quite cool. Right, we're okay. So, I've done this, and it's absolutely true. This will make more sense in a little while. There is a massive divide between these two and that. Although these two, well, that one's not. This one, it's not because of the sex as well. But no, because. <laughs> oh, forget it. You get the idea. <laughs> okay. I've got a little video I'd like you to watch. Now, a lot of you might have seen this video before. It's by a friend of mine, Darren Pollard. It's fantastic, this video. It really is. Um, <laughs> I'd like to explain. There, there is some writing in it. You might not be able to read it. Don't worry, I will explain afterwards. But just have a little look at this. I don't actually know if this is going to work. Oh, it is. Have we got sound, Andrew? It'll come on in a minute, mate. I'm in my own garden here, mate. Okay. What well, are you conversing down? The it's not an offence at all. It is, sir. It is. No, it's not an offence at all. No, I'm a filmmaker, mate. I know the laws. I've been doing this for years, mate. I film the police all the time. It's not an offence. Okay. Well, what what, what section is it an offence under? It's an offence. What section is an offence under? Oh, I'll find out for you. Can you switch the camera off? No, I can't switch my camera off. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm in my own garden. You've come round our path. I do this all the time, mate. Yeah, you can. Get the mobile phone, Mr. Lister. Mate, this is a free country. You're entitled by law, yeah? Yeah, he's in his own garden, minding his own business, and the police have just come over here intruding on my privacy, my liberty, my freedom. It's not illegal. I do this all the time. I film the police all the time down here. I film the inspector at the, at the meetings, mate. Just I think you've got what, it long. What's your name? Sorry, sir. I think you've got it wrong, right? What's and you, and what I, you know what you ought to do, mate? What, you know, do you know what you ought to do? If you don't like me filming here, you do what I do. You go to see the MPs, yeah, and get them to bring it up in Parliament so they can change the laws. But don't come and harass me over it. Sorry, sir. It, it doesn't matter who I am, mate, you know? You're not number 50. You know? I'm not doing anything wrong at all, mate. Nothing wrong at all. You just, uh, you just took it on your own head to come over and harass me, you know? This is England, mate, you know? Yeah, it's 158, so... This isn't, this isn't communist China, you know that, mate, don't you? 
I think, it, I think it's terrible what you're doing here. Yeah, it's not an offence, mate, see? We can more pick that up better than your ears. I said we can more pick it up better than his ears. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to make an issue here and I'm not biting for you. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. What are you trying to make an issue for? I've not broken no laws. You come over here harassing us, mate. I get it, what is actually going on there is the fact that two police officers were trying to enforce something that didn't actually exist. And they had to radio their sergeant to find out if it existed or not. And they were told it didn't exist. So they had to stroll down Darren's path and hold their heads in shame. And I have it on good, um, uh, good information that that um, male police officer has been passed down quite a few times and he hides his head. Um, I know Darren doesn't lie, so I've got no reason to disbelieve him. But it's something very key there. And the thing is that when these people actually pull you up, for whatever they do, whatever you've done, or whether you haven't done anything, more to the case, excuse me, that drink's repeating, um, ask them. Because they, some, most of these people, when they're doing what they're doing, they don't actually know what they're doing. That's the point. They make it up as they go along. The classic is now, if you, do you know you can be arrested for answering questions? Uh, actually asking questions. You can be arrested for it. Friends of mine have been arrested for asking questions. And it's called, um, what's it called? That's the one, yeah. Obstruction of a police officer in his duty. Now I'm going to ask you something. Arresting people is meant to be in the public interest. So who is their duty to? Because if they're arresting people for asking questions, it's certainly not in the public interest. So, they have a duty, but a duty to what? Might be a question you might want to ask them sometime. Um, another thing is, you'll notice as well, when they knew they were losing, the lady officer decided to pick a fight. And over any issues you could really find, any issue at all. And this is the point, and the classic was said, your name your address. This is powerful information they need. They need it, and I will explain this in a bit. But Darren did something, and he did something very, very significant in that video. And it's something that a lot of you possibly could have missed. When that officer said to him, can you put the camera down, he said, no. And did the officer pursue it? No. One of the most powerful words in the world. It's one of the smallest words in our vocabulary and one of the ones we're so frightened to use. Just say it. No. That's what it's all about. It is. Greater Manchester Police. Essex, Kent, Surrey, Dorset, Lincolnshire, Staffordshire, Cleveland, Merseyside, Warwickshire. All companies. City of London. Companies. All registered as companies. They are all companies. This is some interesting information that come via one of our researchers up in Lancashire. And I did find this fascinating. Lancashire County Council, this is not a city, this is, this is a county. Counties are big places. So it's a county council, not a local council. Was incorporated under that IP number, which happens to be 666, which I found quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. I'll leave that one for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's a registered address and it was completely dissolved on the 25th of January 2008. This is the County Council. Completely dissolved. All assets and liabilities of Lancashire County Council were transferred to another company called the Blues and Twos Credit Union. <laughs> and guess who owns the Blues and Twos Credit Union? This company is Lancashire Police Headquarters. 
Huh? So we have a police headquarters now owns a county council. Anyway, you know, it's a bit mind-boggling, this one. So anyway, Mike has been fighting council tax and doing quite well at it as well. So he rang up the, the um, FSA down at Canary Wharf and had a chat with a lovely girl called Maria who actually was quite happy to depart quite a lot of information. And Maria said to, to Mike, well, you shouldn't really be paying council tax to them anymore because they don't actually exist. So who are you actually paying? Which I found fascinating. Well, it turns out that a few people have jumped on this and started to ask some very, very awkward questions regarding this matter. Because, truth be known, even if council tax was lawful, which I promise you it's not, and lawful and legal are not the same and never the twain shall meet, ever. And I will explain a little bit about that. Everyone who's been paying since that date is entitled to a refund. How many more are doing this? How many more people can get refunds? And this is all about money, I promise you. There's nothing more. This is about money. So we found this very fascinating. Same again, I don't really believe. I like to go and look for information myself, which is what I'm asking you to do. I don't want you to believe me. You can go and find this. So I went on Company's house, as it used to be, and lo and behold, there's the IP 666. Lancashire County Council, company removed. Lancashire County Council dissolved on the 25th of the 1st, 2008. Now there's something very significant about this, because if you go and try and find this now, it's not there. Now they're not allowed to do that. But who owns Company's House? Have you looked at the web name? It says .gov. So, we have a company, a council that's not meant to be a company, because you ring them up and ask Lancashire County Council if they're a company, you get some really interesting conversations with these people. We're not a company, but you've got a registration number. And it's got 666 in it. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> See, a company can't have any authority. I'm going to explain this later. Why companies and corporations can't have authority. They can't. And it's quite, it's quite simple, but I'll explain it. Anyway. So I went on Dun & Brad Street, and lo and behold, Blues and Two's Credit Union, Lancashire's Constabulary, Federal Office. Federal? Are we a republic? I, I, I presume, I, I always understand we're a sovereign nation. Or are we? Or have we been a republic for a lot longer than we could possibly imagine? But I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm bringing a book out. I'll just get you to buy it, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> right. This comes to us as well, which is fascinating. Devon and Cornwall Police. Devon and Cornwall police have been taken over by a company called South West One. A police force, a whole county police force, is being taken over by a private company. South West One is part of a group of companies whose ultimate parent company is IBM. Oh, you know about IBM. Right, I don't know what to say. And this is a police constabulary. A public service paid for by taxpayers' money. Well, supposedly who only have any form of authority because they hold individual oaths. This is what I talked about with the police. The police service as a whole doesn't hold an oath because it can't. It has to be every man and woman in that service. If it's for me, I'm busy. Um. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I do that every talk. Well, I shouldn't do it. Right, sorry. Yeah, so they can't. So it, it's got to be on the man or the woman. Each, I don't like using the word individual, but it's the only word I could, could put there, because individual doesn't mean what we believe it to mean. So now a police constabulary is being told what to do by a private company, a bit like the ACPO, you might have heard of them, a non-profit making organisation that's made up of chief police inspectors that has 18 million in the bank. I want to ask you, how do you get 18 million in the bank when you don't make profit? Yeah. Interesting. But this company is not only telling them what to do, and what, what happens to the oath of office? As a corporation can have no authority, for a mort's main cannot hold an oath. A mort's main is two words, it's dead and hand. Companies are known as, corporations are known as mort mains. Dead hand. They're dead. They do not live, they do not breathe, they are not natural. 
they are dead. So, there's something very wrong. Corporations can have no authority because of Mortmain. Land cannot be alienated by Mortmain, because corporations can't own land. That's why your house is called property, because that's the little trick they use. They turn land into property. But property is a corporal inheritment, which basically means it's not visible and can't be seen. You just don't know. There's a lot to that. Again, you have to buy the book. <laughs> no. Right, this is what I want to talk about. This is it. Legalese, a language of a company called the Law Society, and it simply is a manipulation of the English language. That's how simple it is. And people say, the Law Society is not a company. Well, according to that, it is. This, anybody got credit card debts? Yeah, we could have. And what do, do you get phone calls off these people? They're quite insistent, aren't they? Yeah. So what do they ask you first? First thing they ask you, your name. And then they ask you for the first line of your address and your postcode and then your date of birth. Don't they? That's every time. Have you ever wondered what, it, what happens when you actually say no? It's really funny. You want to try it? What? <laughs> No, if they ring up and they say, Mr. Harris, I say, yeah, okay. They say, may I confirm your first line of your address and um, your postcode? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? You have to. How are you going to make me do that? <laughs> it's so simple. You just don't. Hello, Mr. John Harris? Yeah, hold on, I'll get him. <laughs> Crack on. <laughs> And I'm going to <laughs> I'll tell you now. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Jonas. Uh, no, he's in the loft. He's deaf, dumb and blind. So you're not going to get a lot out of him. <laughs> and you'll get that in a bit. <laughs> but this is it. Right. This is called Joinder. It's very simple. And what it is, is I am asked my name and address and date of birth. This is only to establish the legal personality, the legal person, and... Uh, Sorry, the address of the legal person, as it says it up there, the address, the name, and the legal, when the legal person was created. This is very similar to a way that they would deal with a company. Very similar indeed. Once Joinder has been established, they can then offer a legal person a contract. As you've seen, Acts of Parliament are contracts. Okay? Statutory instruments are created, written, legal contracts. So it's a contract. But they need my consent. So I am asked to do what I, so I'm asked every time, you can see this on the bottom of the police forms, my friend in the audience, Morris, will confirm this. What did it quite clearly say? I understand. Okay? You're asked, do I understand? Then I would sign one piece of paper, if not more, to say that I am the legal person, and as, as I, as the legal person, understand. But this is deception. And basically, understand is synonymous with the word stand under. You want to check this out? Black's Law Dictionary. There's eight versions of it. There's probably a ninth one coming out. But it's, so it's stand under. It is a legal requirement that you understand, but not that you actually understand. I'm going to put that into English. It's a legal requirement that you stand under their authority, but it's not a legal requirement that you actually fucking comprehend what's going on. <laughs> During any process I am subjected to by the corporate officers, I will be asked at some time, do you understand? This is simply about getting your consent, because you have to say yes. Because a contract is a contract, and a contract can't be formed unless all sides agree, give mutual consent. So you're asked it, do you stand under me? Do you give me a corporate officer authority? That's what they're actually saying to you. But it's not you, it's a legal person. It is this piece of paper. This is a blank one. But this is this piece of paper. This is all they can act against. Yeah, but you need to represent it. And that's what, they, they, that's what the joiner's there for, to get you to represent it. So let's look at a fixed penalty notice, the deception of notice, joiner, understand at work. This is it at work. Very simply. In legalese, a notice is not a bill. A notice is not a demand. It is an offer. An offer of a contract. Notice is synonymous with offer. 
when the offer has been made, the legal person must be established through joinder, for the legal person is nothing more than a piece of paper. But they have to establish it, otherwise they can't offer the contract to it. Because of this, they need the man or woman to agree to represent the piece of paper by saying, I understand. Fixed penalty notices are the same as all and any statements made. They are simply self-perpetuating contracts. They perpetuate themselves. This is, it's, it's completely deceptive. I'll show you, show you how it works. It's not very clear. If you look at the top of this, it's penalty charge notice. So it's penalty charge offer. Okay, so it's an offer of a penalty charge. Then you get all the bullshit, right? And it is bullshit. <sighs> and it says notice to owner, notice to owner, blah, 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 blah. And it even says there, the person. So they're even telling you what they're acting against. They're telling you. They have to tell you. They go around here, and then you've got this magic little box here. Because what you do is, you tell them what the legal, who the legal personality is, you tell the address the legal personality is at, you put the postcode, and if you're stupid enough, you put a daytime telephone number. <laughs> and then you put a signature to say, I understand. Self-perpetuating. Self-perpetuating contracts. So simple. An arrest, if you make a statement to the police, is exactly the same. It's a self-perpetuating contract. You just don't know you're doing it. This is a bit of fun more than anything, but we... we We've got a problem with this because we think Val's suffering with saying because you can't actually sign a signature three times the same. Because <laughs> half these people don't even exist. I don't know if you know this, but this is a trick of the corporate world. I had a letter come through, well, not to me, to someone else, from a company, a solicitor's called H Legal. And the signature said, H Legal. So I'm going to ring them up and say, can I speak to H Legal, please? But this is what they do. It's amazing. Now, this is that's one of my favourites. This is. Get, if you get this information today, you never have to pay a TV licence ever again. Serious. You don't have to pay it. This is dynamite, this. This comes from a mate of mine in Milton Keynes. He sent me this, and it was just, we just had such a giggle. Because this is what this is about. Laughter. It's about laughter. Believe me, it's about laughter. Don't worry about that bit and that bit. I just want to read you something. We will present evidence found of your watching TV without a licence. Yep. How are you going to do that? So we're in the court. Your Honour, here's his TV. <coughs> that was the chair he was sat on, and he was sat like that watching it. Your Honour, I was outside the window with the video cam, and I caught him. What a load of bollocks. But it's true, you know, I mean, they can't do it, so they have to fool you. And this is dynamite, this is genius. Whoever come up with this stuff is a genius. I'm going to say that open heartedly because it is so simple. But it's shrouded in complication, so you don't understand it. That's the idea of it. But it just took a simple carpenter, and believe me, I am simple. <laughs> right, let's change the words. Let's use legalese on this, okay? We talked about maxims, maxims in law, internationally recognised facts of law. This one's a maxim at the top. It's called the inclusion of one is exclusion of another. This is a very powerful maxim. Now, it says here, which may include a statement taken under caution by one of our enforcement officers. Sounds ever so threatening. Shaking your boots. But, if you legalise this, you'll find that must is synonymous with may, so in this case may becomes must, which says which must include a statement taken under caution by one of our corporate enforcers. Because of that maxim, anything after includes is all it includes. So basically, you convict yourself. You make a statement, and guess what you do? Name, address, yes, I was watching television, blah, 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 and you sign it at the bottom. Self-perpetuating contract. Then off you toddle to a court because you think you're going to get justice, but you're actually going to suffer a thing called summary judgment because you've already established your guilt. They don't have to establish anything. That's, this is the simpleness of this. This is how clever it is. It is so simple. You actually, a statement, actually, when you break the word down, means to set down lies. That's actually what it means. The point is, you've been conned. 
When you look at the wordings of all these documents and you start looking at the legal world's documents, believe me, you can tear it apart. When you've just got a little bit of this information, you can rip it to pieces. You really can. So watch for this. When you look at their documents, watch for this. Summons is a deception as well. Summons is synonymous with invitation, so you're actually being invited because you're not, you can't be forced. That's why must is synonymous with may, because you can't be forced. You can't be forced into a contract. They can't force you into it because it's not law, you can't be forced. So they have to trick you, deceive you. This is a classic one. They are inviting a legal person to a corporate place of business and believe me, they are corporate places of business. They really are. The legal person is just a birth certificate, a piece of paper. So if they ask you to go to court next time, send them the birth certificate and tell them to crack on. <laughs> this legal personality, this legal personality was created by the United Kingdom Corporation. The history of this document is very, very simple. In 1856, the GRO was incorporated. In 1857, birth certificates came out. In 1874, but Deaths and Births Act went through, and this was topped up in 1953. This is it. This is this document. Okay? All contracts, by the way. All contracts. So this is what they're inviting. They are using deception, as every magistrate's court is a trading name of a company called the Ministry of Justice. And there it is, the Ministry of Justice. But it's on Dun & Bradstreet, so it can't be real. Oh, okay then. So, but they're trading as a magistrate's court. So, if we're on Dun & Bradstreet, you can buy a report. So we bought one. And there you go, Ministry of Justice, Selborne House, it's all there. Line of business, government department. Hmm, that's interesting for a start. And they trade as the Asylum Immigration Tribunal, Magistrates' Court and the Public Trustees' Office. I've highlighted really what I found significant because who owns this business? No parent company. Now that's interesting. In the business world, if there is no parent company, that means they are a parent company. And it's obvious because they're trading in their name. So they're the parent company of all them businesses. Every single one of them. Who are the directors? Lord Faulkner. Hmm. If you don't know anything about Lord Faulkner, have a look at him and have a look at his brother as well. Very, very interesting. Are there any significant legal proceedings, events against this business? A county court judgment was registered against this business on the 16th of the 12th, 2008. So, right, let me get this straight. We've got a business that's not meant to be a business that doesn't even do good business. Well, that's the truth of it. And then the last part was the one that got me. year this business started, 1600. So anyway, we rang up the Ministry of Justice and asked them a few questions, and they didn't want to answer. I ring up Parliament, they get really snotty on the phone with me. I would ring up Buckingham Palace as well, they don't want to talk to me either. And all the House of Lords, they're very interesting these people. But I checked this out with Dun & Bradstreet, and we had this checked out, and it turns out their stuff is completely factual. There was someone that I was recently, I've got to tell you quickly about a friend of mine over in Wales who rang me up, and he's a lawyer, he's a statute lawyer as well, a constitutional lawyer, and he rang me up, named Martin, and he got a lovely Welsh accent, and he said, John, he said, do you know the name for the legal world, the legal system? And I said, no. I said, he said, well, the Latin name for it is bollocks. <laughs> but you're laughing. But it's actually B-O-L-L-O-X, bollocks. And bollocks means to set into confusion. Aha! So he was right, he was just leading me along a path. And I laughed just the same as you do. He's given this to someone, a barrister, who's looked at this. And there's been a few people who looked at this. And it actually turns out that this, these people have come back and said to us, if this document is legit, which it is, and if you want to see a copy, I've got a copy in there, so I'll pass it around, I'm quite happy to. If this document's legit, this country has been lawless for 409 years because the whole justice system is being dealt with by a company. And this makes complete sense when you look at the history of between 1600 and 1717. Again, you have to buy the book. Anyway, when you've, done a, when you've bought a report, you can track a company in case there's any adverse credit issues come up. So we decided you have to pay for it as usual. 
And it turns out that payment performance of the Asylum Immigration Tribunal had gone down to 31 days. And it's actually a blue star, which is pretty bad in Dun & Bradshaw. He's basically saying, don't do business with these people. Really don't do business with them. But what's interesting is we brought this out of the foundry and we talked about this, which a few people will know about. About two weeks afterwards, there was a little fire in the city. Guess what building burnt down? The Asylum Immigration Building. That building burnt down. And all the records. Rather convenient, isn't it? It just shows you. There's so much you don't realise that's going on. But this is all heading in a direction which I'm going to get to rather quickly because I'm running out of time. I want to talk about deception of the name because this is very important. If I go to a court, as I've just shown you, a corporate place of business, as the accused, if you go into a court, you're the accused. Point blank, you're the accused. I would be asked to confirm my name. They even would presume to know who I am. The reason they know who I am is because I would have been an idiot beforehand and wrote a statement. So my name is on the top of the statement. So simple. And it is the full name entered on my birth certificate, the legal person. Mr. and the titles are just the legal status of the, uh, the personality. And I've never been asked for that. I've never got asked for it once. But who is the accused? The legal person. The name on the birth certificate. So when they ask for me, my name, they are talking to the legal person. Not me, but why? If you understand any of this, this is the only slide I would have to show you. This is all I would have to show you. I'm going to grab this. Right. Legal is in four money. This stuff. Pieces of paper. That's all it's about. Pieces of paper. Nothing else, nothing more. Law is about us. We're natural. Okay? Words of substance. Words of nature. So if you look at this, law, legal is in form only. Person. A man or a woman is a substance of words of nature. Legal is the antithesis of moral or natural. It's the exact opposite. Nothing can exist in the legal world unless a piece of paper says it exists. That's its legal personality. So when they ask for my name, they are not talking to me, the man, because as a man, I cannot exist in the legal world. It's so bloody obvious. I can't exist in it. I'm a thing. Unless I've got a piece of paper to say what I am. You don't know what he is. Where's the piece of paper? It's true. I can <laughs> so as you can simply see, they're actually talking to this piece of paper. But you're not told, you're not told this. And there's a specific reason you're not told this. This is the easiest way to break this down. Natural law and common law, and common law is actually meant to be a mirror of natural law, and natural law basically is two simple values, harm and loss. That's all it has to be. Nothing else. It covers every eventuality. So you've got natural law. That is actually me. That applies to me. Acts of Parliament statutes, the statutes of instruments which I've shown you, contracts that only apply to the legal personality. But because that's just a piece of paper, they need me to represent it. Now, I've shown you that United Kingdom is a corporation. I've shown you what the Acts of Parliament statutory instruments. I've shown you the corporate police and the corporate courts. And that's what they act upon. Exactly the same with the councils. That's the system. That's how simply it works. If you look at it and you actually go in your heart, which um, the lady spoke about earlier, the only basic principles that any nation really needs to adhere to are those of natural law, which are harm and loss. You don't cause anyone any harm or loss in your words or your actions. That's it, that's, that's how simple it is. As you have seen, the Acts of Parliament statutes only apply to the legal personality, the name, the birth certificate, and a piece of paper. As you've also seen, they need a man or a woman to consent to represent the legal person because a piece of paper can't walk, can't talk, and it can't pick up a pen because it's stationary. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, isn't it? Yeah, it, uh, it is, yeah. This thing can only do sake when I do sake with it. Look, I'll put it over here and I'll call it. Jump! <laughs> it needs our energy. It needs us to do something. And that's the clue. That's the clue of how to reverse all of this. It really is. Consent can be given in inaction or action. So basically, if, you, if, so, if I say to you, do you understand and you nod, that's inaction. If you sign something, that's action. It's that simple. So how did they create it? 
the legal person, the given name was created when my birth was registered and evidenced by my birth certificate, a piece of paper. Man created government, which in turn created legal personalities. This is not me, it's a legal fiction I've been falsely identifying with, as most people have. I don't get to say what its rights and duties are. The United Kingdom Corporation does. They created it. But it had to mislead me into doing so via deception. This is the easiest way to put it, and the way that people sort of kind of come to this. Obviously, you know, you know, I'm a man. I exist naturally, and I was created by my mum and dad. Yeah. And I understand it was a pleasant act, but I just don't want to know the details. <laughs> <laughs> Subject to common law jurisdiction. Must never harm or loss or cause another any form of loss. And I have a free and unlimited ability to do as I please, as long as I adhere to these two very, very basic principles. And that is where we're all going wrong. The legal person, John James Harris, is the given name which is wrote on my birth certificate. It's a fictional legal entity created by the government via the birth certificate and it's subject to civil policy jurisdiction. Must fulfil all duties given to the government by the company. Acts of Parliament, blah, 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 tax and all the other crap. So we looked at person and we found that it includes natural person, firm, co-partnership, association, I won't carry on. Well, Richie, one of the admin who sat at the top there, actually says, well, how can you define one word using the exactly same word? Because that's a mockery. You're failing to define anything. This is in Black's Law. This is the lawyer's Bible, and I know it's their Bible because I had a lawyer turn up at one of my talks with his Bible, trying to take me down with his Bible, and it didn't work. But, in context, that which follows controls, which precedes, which precedes. Bouvier's 1870, I've lost my piece of paper. Natural person, contextually, person follows and controls, and naturally is lawful, and therefore null and void. Now, in English, that means that this piece of paper cannot control me, because I'm natural, and this is just a piece of paper. So a natural person cannot possibly exist. But the lawyers all know this, this is what they use, this is what they're taught. And I actually spoke to a law student once, and I said to her, why are there eight versions of Black's Law? Why are the words changing in eight different versions? Why don't they stay the same? Surely if a word's defined, then it won't change. If it's defined in the dictionary, why would it change? Oh, well, you know, society, but... <laughs> society. When I talked to this law student about it, she said, it's not for you to read. <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you hiding then? <laughs> There's a lot in there, you want to read it. Deception of the personality. I wanted, I'm going to cover this very quickly, but most men and women believe, they do believe you are a person, you have a personality, you have it ran down your throat, so there's no wonder you believe it. Everything's about person and personality. The personality is a social mask all men and women wear. This is simply the ego which needs status and control. This is our world. We live in the world of the ego. We live in the world of status. And believe me, I'm battling my ego and this does not help. That's why <laughs> it don't help. <laughs> but this is why this deception works so well. Because it mirrors something that is naturally going on inside you. This is a battle you go for. If you're willing to take this battle up, if you're willing to take this battle up. Now, I'm not a religious person. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a religious man. I know there's something there. I just choose not to call it anything. That's it. And I don't want to know, to be quite honest with you. I do, but I do know there's something. I just don't know what it is. Someone told me the story. I've looked at the story of Jesus, and I, I'm, I, I take what everybody says, and I accept their views. So I just ask you to accept mine. I don't believe that Jesus died if he did exist. I believe he did something far greater. He sacrificed his ego. He sacrificed his personality. Because that's what this is really about. He actually sacrificed it because the only way you can truly live and the only way you can truly love is to get rid of that thing called the ego. We live in an egotistic world. Everybody, it, look, I've talked about President Obama on Red Ice, and I've talked about this, and it's like, President Obama is a man. But because of his ego and his status, he believes he now has the right to go into a foreign country and kill people. This is the problem with the world we live in. It's about this word, status. It's about the ego. 
And I've realised it because I've got the biggest ego in the world. I'm an arsehole. I just don't talk shit. <laughs> it's true. This is absolutely true. It preys on our need for betterment and status. It, it's a need for control. This is what we, we want to control every situation. We, if, if our ego's not right, it goes into overdrive. I've seen it, the battle of the egos on the forums. It's incredible. Every time you have an argument, it's not a man and a woman or two men or two women arguing. It's the egos are arguing. The best way to do it is shut your gob. Shut your gob and the ego can't take over. It might be screaming at me, you're right. <laughs> Argument over. It's not bad to be wrong. I'm quite often wrong. And I'm, I, I, as a man, I can make a decision any time I want to change my views. Because I can. And that doesn't make things bad. If I can't change my views and learn from my mistakes, how the hell can I evolve? This is a deception, this is, this is I'm, I'm, not, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to go through this quite quick. But your parents basically submitted a form, they registered you, and it's exactly the same as when a company's registered. And if you look on your birth certificate, you actually says the birth certificate is not evidence of identity. So it's actually telling you, quite clearly states, it has nothing to do with a man or a woman. It tells you. It's written on it. Also, the fact it holds a crown copyright on it, so it's not even yours. <laughs> the same as money. Money's got a copyright on it. It's not yours, it's just a product for you to use. Deception of registration, this is absolutely true. Consider this. Could the government actually take my car away and crush it if I lawfully owned it? Could they do it? Why can't they? No. You, you, you. If I legally own my car, if I lawfully own it, then they can't take it from me because it's a crime. Okay? Theft is a crime. Doesn't matter who's stealing, it's a crime. But by using, one second, by using the process of registering my car, they duped me into handing over legal ownership. So now a company owns my car. But that's a very unique situation because if a company owns my car, hold on a minute, I've got this V5 document that says I'm the registered keeper. Hold on a minute, I'm the owner. No, you're not, you're the registered keeper. Okay, so if I'm not the owner, that means who I registered to is the owner, which is a company. So, oh, that's, that's very interesting. So, this, this works for your children exactly the same way, exactly the same. And they are, see? car is legally owned by a company, Department of Transport, Traders DVLA. All I'm going to say to you is, if you get a parking ticket that says it applies to the owner, send it to the fucking owner. <laughs> You're going to have so much fun, you really are. Right, why the government companies? This information is from our search provider. This is this gentleman who came along, and I must say thank you, Russ. All government companies seem to have a, the same prefix at the beginning of their company number. They start with UC. Now, we believe that that means under charter. It could mean unincorporated. We're not 100% sure. But UC companies and royal charter companies do not have to pu publish their accounts as they are exempt under law. Well, that's a bit of a... <laughs> So if you do start a company, apply for a royal charter, because you're exempt under law, you don't have to publish your accounts, you can do what you want. True. The service they provide us with is a business to business service and they do not include government corporations in any of their services. Government corporations? We're going back to this company thing, what's going on? So why companies? Let's answer the question. As you see, the Acts of Parliament are enforced by statutory instruments which are in fact contracts. But a contract can only legally exist between two or more persons. What's a company when it's been incorporated? What does it become? A person. It has legal personality, so it becomes a person. So then it can do business with another person under contract. This is why they're all companies. But there's a bigger reason to this, but it's just part of the reason. 
So a company corporation is a legal person for it has legal personality via a certificate of registration certified name, exactly what you were given when you were born. Exactly the same process. This, uh, their per legal personality is just a piece of paper as the one you, you have. So the contract only exists between the pieces of paper. But they're the person, so the contract only exists. But obviously they can't communicate. So they need us. That's the trick. You cannot exist in the legal world, so it doesn't apply to us as men, women and children because it cannot exist. Legal industry, and it is an industry, believe me, they don't like it being called an industry, but it is an industry. So the contract simply cannot apply to us. So what is going on? John talked about Magna Carta. I've got a slightly different take on Magna Carta, just slightly. And I just want to run you past it. Magna Carta 12 being started the process of the separation of power, it's called devolution away from the sovereign to a parliament of barons on the pretense that that parliament was set up to represent the people and to protect them, protect them from tyrannous sovereigns. Okay, that was the pretense of it. That's basically what the story is. Now what we are seeing is a devolution of power away from government to a third sector, private companies, to remove the oath of office to destroy the sovereign and the people's sovereignty. If that sovereign is destroyed or that position is destroyed, because it's not about who's on that position, it's about the position, then we're stuffed. We're stuffed. I don't, I've read the lies, I've read all sorts of stuff about the Queen and her family on the internet, and I've read some quite mind-boggling stuff as well. The point is this, it's been put there to turn you away from that lady for a specific reason, because she, really she's the only one who can actually do something. She holds the power of dissolution at common law. She holds the power of royal promocration. Do we know what the 2004 Contingencies Act is? We've heard of this document. It's a very damning document, isn't it? But do you know, written in Oxford Law Dictionary, 2008, that the uh, Civil Contingencies Act of 2004 cannot be enacted without royal promocration? I can't say that word properly, so please... <laughs> I can't say it. Promoc... I can't, bollocks. But it can't be enacted without her say so. She has to declare a state of emergency. You've been turned away from that lady for a specific reason, a very specific reason, because of that power of dissolution. What happens to a company when you dissolve it? Gone. I'm going to get to it in a little bit. This is to finally create the corporate republic, to stop everything that was created from this island being uncreated, because the world suffers at what we created, not us. Our ancestors created. 52 countries in the world suffer under our hand. Probably more actually now. But they suffer under what was created from this country and went out with the fleet. That's why it's called fleet law. But they have a problem for as long as I live and breathe. This island, its people and their descendants will never perish. And I'm going to explain why. Nor will their sovereignty. A little while ago, well about a year ago, I marched myself off down to Buckland Palace and decided to serve papers on the Queen. Most people actually believe I was out of my mind. What I'm going to say is, I was completely out of my mind. And I like being out of my mind. It's a very nice place to be. I really do. So I goes down to Buckland Palace and I met a very friendly uh, policeman with a very, very big machine gun who said that I can't serve the papers so I devised the way of getting the papers to the Queen. Now, I didn't know actually what I was doing. I just knew my heart said it was right to do. So I went down there and did it. Therefore, there's an, there's an affidavit, sorry, the maxim on this, there's an affidavit, an affidavit that unrebutted stands as truth in law. I served affidavits on the Queen, two documents. I gave her 40 days, based upon Article 61 of Magna Carta, not Article 61, based upon. I made that mistake. Therefore, with this lawful affidavit, there is no higher authority than me. I am sovereign in law, as I have removed authority from our representative, our sovereign, until such time as a true representative is our sovereign. Now, what this basically means is, because the Queen is the highest point of authority in the land, she only gets her authority from us. So that means I can remove that authority any time I feel fit, if I feel that things have gone tits up. And they have very much gone tits up. 
So I've removed it. This basically means this document is now in law. It's a new law. This is how law comes about. This is called a precedent. You can call it John's law if you want, but it's a new law and it's for all you to use. You can use it. You go into a court of law and you use this document correctly, you can actually prove to a judge you are the highest authority within that court and there's nothing they can do. Nothing. Because this removes their authority. They have to have an oath to the Queen to take their position as a judge or a magistrate or as a recorder, which is a barrister who's learning to be a judge. So if they have to have an oath to the Queen, you've removed the power of that oath to have any form of authority. You become the highest authority and that law that can't be rebutted. We've got them on a we've got them. Whatever way they turn, they're knackered. Now they're ignoring these documents because they don't face up to it. They really don't face up to it. Now it's actually gone nowhere near the Queen. It probably ended up at the FCO, Foreign and Commonwealth Office, which is probably the best place it could go. We, the people of this island, have the power to simply say no. This affidavit says no. You're not doing this anymore. I'm putting an end to it. All the people of the Commonwealth can do exactly the same. And the reason it was based upon Article 61 is because it's lawful, peaceful hindrance with no violence. No violence. Someone said to me, how would I deal with the MPs? I'm going to tell you this. Order 635 brooms, because they will be sweeping the streets they thought they used to own. <laughs> oh, and we just found out as well, you don't need solicitors anymore. Three people can do this. Just three independent people can sign any affidavit. So we're even going to start the corporate body having their money. Okay? So you don't need solicitors. Come and see TPC members or go and get your friends together and you can sign these documents and get them off. If you don't exit the system, you don't do anything. All you're saying is, this is what needs to happen. We need to re reclaim the sovereignty and this is how it's done. This is the clue. This is it. This is what you can use. Once you understand what we're doing, you have to have a certain amount of gumption about you to do this, and it takes a bit of strength to do it. The lady said earlier about having courage. I don't see it as courage. I just see it as using your heart to allow you to deal with situations and not your mind. Your heart will deal with everything peacefully. Your mind will enter into the ego, and lo and behold, things will happen. To survive without money is nearly impossible in the world we live in. But that does not mean just some of us are enslaved by this product. It means all of us are. Everyone. And that's the key. My daughter said to me, she's 13 years old, she said, Dad, if we're in debt, print more money. <laughs> and that sparks that, because I love the way that kids do things. They just, they just see everything so simply. And the interesting part is, it's true, if you have the power to create money, why would there ever be debt? And if there is debt, it's there for a reason. So what we decided to do is a bit of fun, if you might, you might want to do this sometime. A little while ago, we started to write, of what, with a question mark. <laughs> and we're sending them back. <laughs> Just a bit of fun, but you, you, could, you could add, um, and also as well, there is a copyright, so it's not yours, nothing to do with you, it's just sort of product for you to use. Money is everyone's lifeline. Money is not a valuable commodity, you are, because of what you do, the work you do for that money, because without you, this whole country would grind to a halt. It's so obvious, it is so obvious. Okay, it's what Gandhi did, basically, exactly what he did until 1946. The only way that you will do that work is to be promised to receive money for that work because you need it to survive. And most people do only survive. They do, simply. You know, there is a lot of people who are fortunate enough not to just survive, but there is a very, very good amount of people in this, this island, on this island who just survive. And that's very sad because my one belief in my heart is that no one should have to pay to live. No one.
Companies and corporations only exist because of money. The money they receive from you is simply their lifeline. A lot of the time to feed their greed, to maintain their delusion of status and to maintain their social dominance. Because that's basically what it's all about. That's what it all boils down to. But the simple question is, what happens to these companies and corporations when everyone says, no, we're not paying you anymore? They cannot survive. If you have a company that issues parking tickets and no one pays the parking tickets, what happens to the company? Exactly. Now this is something we can have a lot of fun with. We can have a lot of fun with it, believe me. So this is a conclusion, simple conclusion, don't give them any money. Keep it yourself. And you can use so many tricks, there's so many things that I do, it's so funny, that you could, and it is about fun. Lawful rebellion, defi deny their lifeline. This is what I do, and I just simply do this every day. I peacefully resist all claims against me by refusing to represent that piece of paper. I've just done it with the debt collectors I showed you, and that's what I said to you. Because it's a piece of paper, mine's in the loft, and it's deaf, dumb, and blind, I tell them it's in the loft, and it's deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> I never accept any of their paperwork. I never accept their paperwork. Every single bit of paperwork that's ever sent to me gets sent back. Because there's something you might not have seen on their letters. Right? This is what we do. It's called no contract return to sender, right across the address window. But on the, but this is HM Customs, just a load of bollocks from the tax man. <laughs> Who's actually trying to make me bankrupt, which is hilarious. Because I actually said, you're trying to make me bankrupt from a bankrupt company? That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got a return address. So this means this has got two-way travel. Because if it's not delivered, it has to be sent back. So I'm just utilising that fact and sending it back to them. So this is what we do. Now I've got a tax man who comes and actually tries to give me the letters. And I just say to him, sorry mate, I don't accept your paperwork. I have a warrant, it's a card, look, mate, that's a piece of card with writing on it which means fuck all. <laughs> you learn this, you can have a lot of fun, but you got, and, oh you do, the, two, oh, so funny yesterday with two CID officers. They said to my partner, you have to sign this. I said, no, you don't. And he says, actually, he's right, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I never accept any of their paperwork forms, and no one can make me accept them. No one can make you accept anything if you don't want to accept it. I send every letter back simply saying, no contract, return the sender. If I get caught, pulled up by the police, I only say as little as I can, I prefix everything, the person. The person, okay? Because you're not talking about yourself then. Contract doesn't exist unless paper changes hands. That's it. You've just been duped in, into it. I never sign anything and I'll never write a statement and I'll never have one wrote for me. And there's not, again, they can't make you do this. I deny them, period, any of the lifeline they so desperately need, which is money. I will never, ever give them a penny and they know it. Lawful rebellion, which is what I basically started a year, a year or so ago, every man, woman and child on this island are sovereigns. In fact, everybody in the world is a sovereign. You're sovereigns in your own right. A sovereign nation, but we are only this as long as we have a sovereign to invest that sovereignty in. A line in the sand that cannot be crossed. No king or queen or government have the right to rule us. They are there to represent and protect us. Nothing more, nothing less, with no greater dignity than anyone they protect. No greater dignity. All the power in the, within this island is held by you and granted by you. Everything that is wrong can end when you will it to. Everything can end when you will it to. We must allow for that line to be drawn in the sand once more. This is lawful rebellion. That is that line. We have to draw the line. Us. What have I done? Nothing more than realise I can say no. And I am going to say no, and everything's going to be okay. Thank you.